so I have no idea. Sorry. You can just come back. All right. Hi, my name is Andrea Earl. Welcome to uh, Getting Started with Canvas, part two. Uh, I am a seventh grade math teacher at Mendez Fundamental Intermediate School in Santa Ana, California. Um, I've been using Canvas for five years or more maybe now. And before that, I did several other uh, learning management systems. And I definitely think Canvas is the best. I'm a huge fan. Uh, it is super robust, but as I'm sure you've all noticed, it's not always that intuitive. And in the last couple weeks, Canvas has been pushing out a lot of improvements. And so we're going to talk about some of those today. We're going to really focus on creating assignments and creating quizzes or assignments using the new quizzes feature. So if you've logged into my course, oops, my training course, uh, here it is, Earl, it's bit.ly slash Earl Canvas training. And you'll see all of my sample assignments here and I keep adding more. So I'm going to go ahead and flip over to that. Let me, let me paste the bit.ly in the chat real quick. Oops, dot ly slash a r l b n p a s t r e. Okay, so if anybody needs that, you can repost it. Um, here is my training course. And the top is my training course homepage, if you will. But at the bottom, this is the homepage I'm going to be using for my real course this year. So several people asked about that last time, so I wanted to share that. Um, I did do a Bitmoji Classroom because I wanted a fun background uh, for my uh, Zoom meetings. Uh, so I just threw the, it's an image, so I threw it in. I did, however, add directions for the kids here. Now, I know there are some teachers that are going to change those directions. Um, I'm not sure that the kids are going to look at it, you know, if it changes. Um, I've seen some really cool home pages, super fancy. Um, I'm not a big, of all, big fan of all the fancy only because I don't have time. So how do you create a Bitmoji, this Bitmoji uh, background? Uh, literally Google it, Bit, Bitmoji Classroom, and you'll find a ton of videos. Uh, I will tell you, however, people ask, is my real laptop? Because I just took a picture of it and then I cropped it to fit on the table. And I really do have this table in my classroom. Um, so I found that, you know, a picture of it. Um, and then I just added some buttons here to what I really want the kids to, to go to and daily assignments that actually goes to modules so that when the kids click it, they go straight to the top module, which will be the current module. Uh, the way I'm setting up my modules for the school year is that the newest will be on top and I'm doing it by week. So week one, week two, week three. Um, I do have an example of that, so let me go. If you go ahead and start here, oh, and then below that, I should say that this is my weekly agenda. This is actually a Google slide. So I've created the slide in a table, and then all I have to do is every single week fill in, you know, make a copy, and then fill in the weekly lessons. And unless something changes, I'm going to do three lessons a day, and I know that sounds like a lot, but actually... The first two are going to be review. Uh, I have a time test based on the Edu protocol, Fast and the Curious. So it's just the same time test um, every day for a week. And the last score is the one they'll keep. The second one is a math rep, which is kind of like a do now or bell work um, based on math reps by uh, 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 Nora, uh, I can't remember her name, but look up math reps. <laughs> it's a great way to teach math. Uh, review, review, not. And then the third thing will be the lesson. I'm also going to set up my modules to force kids to work through the module in order. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So that's my homepage. Andrea, a quick question. So do you hide the actual module uh, button from them so they just go to the daily assignment you button? Know I was, I was considering that. I hadn't really decided yet, but I know some elementary teachers are actually, so the whole course menu bar um, is hidden. 
is Except hidden. the home page. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking to, yeah. to be doing. A lot of uh, elementary teachers, you know, it's too much for the kids and they're thinking it's mm -hmm. too sophisticated. But, and you don't even need all these buttons. In fact, I'm probably going to get rid of uh, the about me. Um, and the one problem though is, is the contact and the calendar. I haven't figured out how to link them to the global menu bar. So I've actually put in a help ticket to Canvas. So we'll see if that works. But yeah, I just want the kids to go to the daily assignments and I want them access to their grades. Those are, I think are the two most important things and just hide all this. They don't need it. They don't yeah, need I it. agree. What about the grade? You can link the grade book link too in the, from the home page, right? Correct. And well, I'll show, yeah. I'll be demonstrating that. So let's, um, all right. So if you go to start here on my course, I just want to show you what I've got in here. Um, there's an introductory survey. Of course, you're seeing it as a student. Um, I have a bunch of sample lessons. I've tried to label them. So like this world tour is a Padlet lesson that I've embedded. Uh, lesson 41 slope is a Google Cloud assignment with a FET simulation built in. Um, I've got a Google Slides lesson. Um, there's just a whole bunch of different things. Uh, several people were asking about embedding a form, a Google form, which you can absolutely do. The problem, however, is that, um, oh, I will show you how to do that. So the problem with embedding a form is that then you've got to go somewhere else to look at the data. So really, you're better off just recreate your form using the, quizzes to, the quiz tool the new quiz tool, and I'll show you how to do that. Um, yeah, you like those little icons? I saw someone on Facebook posted those. I'm like, oh my God, that's so cool. So I literally Googled, how do you add an icon? So I will show you how to do that. So let's go, um, let's go where we're gonna go. All right, so we're gonna, I'm just gonna pick an assignment. I am going to edit it. And by the way, you might wanna have your Canvas course up and open so that you can be playing at the same time. So when you have any place where you can type, put the cursor where you want the icon, and there's a shortcut. The shortcut is, I'm gonna put it in the chat. Hang on, where is it? Uh-oh, where'd it go? All right, the shortcut is Command Control Space on a Mac. So literally, Command Control and the space bar, and up pops, Oh, you can't see that on your screen, I'm sorry. But up pops menu, okay? And so I'm just gonna add the emoji menu. Oops, did it go in? Maybe not. Okay, there we go. There you go, so you can see I popped it in. On a PC, it's Windows and a period, I think, on Windows 10 but I'm on a Mac, sorry. So. Andrea, what will that get you? That gets you the emoji, the emoji keyboard. Okay, thank you. So if you see how I added the little world globe in front of world tour, that's how I did that. And that just adds a little bit of pizzazz. And again, I'm not a big pizzazzy fan, but it makes it a little cl uh, clearer for the students. All right, so on a Mac again, it's command control space. And on Windows, I believe it's the Windows key in a period. You'll have to try that. If I'm wrong, someone in the chat, go ahead. It, and, uh, no, it worked. It on a Mac, on a Windows? Perfect. Yeah, Windows. Yeah, that works. Thank you. All right, so I've got a bunch, a bunch of lessons. I have some math reps that we've already put together. I am going to put this little um, weightlifter guy for all my math reps. So I will get that done. Um, and then at the bottom, I have resources from Canvas. I have a curated list, uh, which uh, I'm going to probably change into a wakelet, make it a little clearer. Uh, expectation for discussion posts. This is really cool. I took this from a college course and then uh, simplified it for middle school. Uh, recent announcements on the home page, because I always like to have my most recent announcement pop up automatically. Uh, there's just a whole bunch of stuff. Uh, some people are asking about tabs, and here's how to do that. And, but this is really cool, these examples of home pages. So if you were in my course last week, I think I showed you these, but people were posting on Facebook all their home pages. And so I literally just grabbed them all. Most have the owner's name, but this is an open file so everybody can add to it. So if you see something cool, so here's mine. 
Uh, this was my one that I'm not using. <laughs> uh, this was my last year, so you can see, you know, I've grown up a little bit. But look at these pre-calculus elementary. I love this ele these elementary ones. So there's just tons of ideas, tons of ideas to get you going. Um, but what I really like, the second file, oops, go back. And everybody, please add your own because the more ideas, you know, we are all better together. Let me go back to modules here. I also have sample um, uh, module setups, which for me, this was the hardest part. How am I going to deliver content in an organized way? In the past, I've always done it by unit, right? So if I'm doing my integers unit, my geometry unit, I just did everything in order. But for distance learning, it just didn't work as well. So after reading and talking to a lot of people, best practices kind of say to do it by the week. So here's some examples of what other people have done. Objective, and then the lessons below using indenting. Uh, this is the one I did. I don't know if you can see that. Oops, go back. Um, so, yeah. I don't know if you can see it. It's kind of small. Uh, go back. <laughs> I keep... Uh, so I've got the date, I've got the week, week of, and then a Monday, and then I'm going to add the date as well. So it'll be Monday, August 10th. But then I have the three lessons, and it'll be the two reviews, like I said, and then the actual course lesson. And whichever days I'm doing live lessons, it'll be the live lesson will be in that list. Uh, when you're in modules, you can force the kids to work through an order. So some people are asking about that. So... Um, and when I say people were asking, it was, uh, I've been reading the, the, the Facebook questions and chats and stuff. So if you go to your module and you click on the drop down, you can edit your module. And one of the things you can do is you can lock it until a certain date. You can add a prerequisite so they need to finish something before they start it. But you can add requirements. And you, the requirement can be students must complete all these requirements. Students must move through the requirements in sequential order. Okay. Or you can just have the kids do one or two of the requirements, depending on what you want. You'll just have to play with it and then look at it from student view to see how it works. But um, this is a, kind of a great way to force kids through. Because like my time test, my fast attack, it's every single day it's the same one. And I don't want the kids to go, oh, I've done it once, I'm done but this will force them, they have to do it every day. So anyway, that's the plan. Of course, you know, best laid plans. All right, and then, oh, I did put my, here's my, the way I'm setting up my modules. With the date, I got the little icons, there you go. All right, so any questions about just set up an organization? All right, so go ahead and flip to your own course. Just if hopefully um, everybody's got it. I have a question, Andrea. Sure. Uh, you did say that the newest module will be on top. Would that mess up the prerequisites or no? Because they just have to specifically do the the course prior. So I won't. Over. Yeah, I'm not going to put in any prerequisites because right. Yeah. So okay. they don't have a prerequisite. Might be they have to finish one module before they move to the next module, which would be good. But um, it's it's just locked within the module. Yeah. So, Okay. And then, yes, I'll put the new module on top because that way, that's the first thing they see when they click on that daily assignments button. Yeah, I agree. I've been doing that someone there. wanted to know, in my agenda, which is a Google, a Google slide, it is not linked to the assignments. I guess I could do that, but that's just way too much work. So I'm all about streamlining my life, right? Yeah. Okay, so let's go. So... Go ahead, everyone, and open up your own course. And, um, oh, actually, yeah, open up your own course. You're, you, everybody should have a sandbox. If you've never created a sandbox course or you don't have a course that's still active, uh, go ahead and just create a sandbox course you can play in. We're going to go to settings, and I'm going to talk about how to add apps. So there are many, many apps within Canvas. They're called LTIs, learning, uh, you know, learning tools, interoperability, or whatever. I don't know, some funky word. But anyway, these are like, there's hundreds, hundreds. It's just ridiculous. So basically, 
Uh, your district has already installed some for you, hopefully. If not, talk to your district um, and they can install them for you. So here's what I have installed in this course so far. And I'm looking and I see that I have not, I've not installed Edpuzzle. So if you've never used Edpuzzle, it's a video app, if you will, that has questions uh, embedded in the video. So it kind of forces kids to watch the video and answer the questions as they go. And probably you'll already be able to find the videos you want with the questions you want already there uh, in, in the Edpuzzle site. But if I want to add Edpuzzle here, what I'm going to do is go to Not Installed. I'll type in Edpuzzle. And if, if you have an Edpuzzle account, you do need to have an Edpuzzle account to do this. And this tells me what to do. It tells me what it does. Do read all this stuff because um, often there'll be hints in it. So now it's asking me for my, my customer key and my shared secret. So I go to Edpuzzle and this is what Edpuzzle looks like. And I don't, I don't know where, right, the LTI key is. So it's under your account. No, like I, you no, I, the pictures. no I know. I know, Nikki. Oh, sorry. <laughs> it was just for, uh, for, uh, <laughs> so Sir, if you don't know where the LTI key is for, um, all you have to do, literally do a Google search, Edpuzzle and Canvas. And the directions are going to pop right up. So um, there's a video. Well, I hadn't even seen this video before. But LTI integrations, and it's going to give you the exact. See, so using Edpuzzle with Canvas, and then it tells you exactly how to do it. So you're going to find it. So it says create your account, school tab, okay, and all the directions. Everything you could possibly want is here. All right, let me go back to. Da, 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 da. Okay, oh, I have I, a question. Sure. So when you install the the LTI for one of your courses, do you have to do it for each course separately, like Nearpod and Edpuzzle? I think I had it Nearpod for a different course, but I don't see it in my other course I created. So I think in. Yeah. Have you, you have you have that? Yeah. Yeah, usually you have to do it again, which is kind of weird, but um, yeah, okay, yeah. So because I noticed that for Ed Puzzle and your pop, it's happening yeah. to where for each course you need to do it. You need to do it for each course, unless um, oh, I don't know where I did unless it. the district did it right. Unless yeah. the district did it correct. Yeah. All right. I didn't mean to go there. So. All right. I do believe it's under it. I just had it up. That's too super funny. And puzzle explore. There you go. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay, hopefully they're in. Okay. There we go. LTI integrations. Using LTI. That's so funny. Where I now I I had it. Oh, there we go. I'd integrate. I think this is it. And these are these are um, your settings are school specific, so you can't copy mine. Sorry. But when I come down here in my, I go to my subject map. I pick my integration, and up comes my customer. So I go back to Canvas and paste it in and always paste. Copy my shared secret. Paste it in. And now my app is installed. I can go down here and see that it's right here. So literally you can Google the directions um, for any integration. Now the way you can tell which um, integrations your district has installed if you click on the view at the top right-hand corner, 
if you see the little eye, that's something that your district has installed. If it's a gear, it's something you've installed. The other thing you can find out is where these things are. So if I want to know where uh, our CPM eBooks are, I click on it and it says no placement. I know that looks really weird, but it means I haven't put it anywhere. Okay. It means the district's installed it. But if I look at my Google apps, this is my cloud. And I, I can see I can delete it because I installed it. Placements, I can see that I can access the cloud tools under the assignments, the collaboration, all these different places. So that's just kind of how you can check to see what's been installed by your district and what you can install. And there's tons of stuff, Flipgrid, you know, that's free. Um, just tons of stuff that you can install. All right. Um, all right. So a lot of people were wondering about creating assignments using the Google integration. So go ahead and check and see if you have that. I'm going to go back to App Center. And I just want to show people, several people emailed me about this. Um, there are two LTIs for Google. And you have to install both of them. The first one is Google Assignments LTI. That's the one where you put something in the, assign the body of the assignment for students to view. Okay. That's what I used for my, my slides, my agenda that's in slides. But then down below, okay, and it says if you're a Canvas school, and when you create your own LTI key, by the way, your own secret key down here, okay? But the second one is this one, which is the cloud assignment. This lets you assign the same thing to every single student, like Google Classroom does, where you give every student their copy. And what's cool is you can give them a copy of slide, a slide, a slide deck, a Word, uh, you know, a Google Doc, a spreadsheet, and a Jamboard, okay? Um, Google, I think you don't need to do for each course. I believe once it's done, it's done. But now I don't remember because you'll have to check. But just know there's two things you need to do, and that's the trick, both of those, okay? All right, so I can't seem to find them in mine. Then you will need to do it again then. So yeah. the way I stumbled upon it, I wanted to create it, the Google assignment, and it popped up like to install it. To install it. Oh, that's good. So maybe. OK. So how, yeah. do, I, how do you get the consumer key? So you're going to have to go down here to the very bottom, and it'll have you create it'll create it for you. OK. You, so I have to this one you really. <laughs> This is the one you really oh, do here. directions. Yeah. Okay. All right. All okay. right. Let's go on. And let's go and actually create a lesson, an assignment. So if everybody would be so kind is just go to your modules or your assignments you pick. Create a new assignment. We're going to just do a regular assignment right now. And I'll go slow. So and if anybody need anyone needs me to slow down, say slow down okay so new is trying to get google <laughs> to be okay. in it i mean i thought i had google in it but yeah. i'm not seeing it in in my installed external apps no it's so not, go to unins go to all yeah search for it yeah you just have to go to all and search for it under apps anyone else having trouble with that Go ahead and so right. Andrea, if it if, if it's installed, yes, that means it says installed. That means we have it where it will bring in the slides or whatever else, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, we're looking for the cloud assignment, Google Drive cloud assignment, and then it's gonna ask you to authorize it if it's your first time. Right. And make make you gotta be careful that you um um, that you authorize it with the correct account that you want to use. Yeah. Because I have two Google accounts and I, yeah. All right. So I'm going to share a link. Hang on. Where is it? Okay. I'm going to share. Wait a minute. Copy link. Okay. I'm going to link in the chat. And um, if everyone would just open it and make a copy of that file. 
this is actually um, like an SEL lesson, uh, kind of a getting to know your kids lesson. So. Give everybody a chance to make that. Okay. I'm having trouble because it took away the consumer key and no, it, when I went to go get the shared key. You no, know, it's there. You on the add, it's on the ad app. Yeah, I mean, it, I've always it's had high. the apps. I don't know why I'm doing having to do this this way. Ruth, don't do it that way. Just try with the new assignment and look for that out. Google. I'm completely lost at the moment. <laughs> I don't know where we're at. I, can you can you say this again with the assignments? I'm also a little bit lost. I okay, lost your picture. I can see. Your I'm completely lost. <laughs> so we're trying to add Google Cloud Google assignments to your course. Let's mm -hmm. let's wait a second, and maybe it might be there and just hidden. So go ahead and let's create a new assignment. And you're going to create the new assignment. I, I put a link in the chat. Open that link. Make a copy of that assignment for your own version. Okay. So everyone should have their own version of that assignment. Wait, hold on. I, I, I am super lost. Okay, so you're saying Let's go to chat. Okay, I got okay. So I've opened up this is your slide. Okay, right. So go to chat, everybody, mm -hmm. and make a copy of that assignment. Make a copy. That that way, just everybody has the same assignment to work on. Mm -hmm. When you open it, it's my version, right? It's mine. Oh, yeah, Jeff. I don't know why it still says it's beta. It's been active for a couple, a year or more, but you're right. It does kind of say that. Yeah, I've forgotten that it still said that. All right, so hang on. So everybody should have a Google Slides. Just save it in your, in your Google Drive. We're now going to create a new assignment. By clicking on the plus sign in the in the module, select assignment, new assignment, and this assignment is actually you. I don't know. You can call it get to know you, or it's really called uncommon commonalities. Andrea, real quick, can you explain um, how you use the modules? I know you said you you do everything for modules, but um, yeah. how do you na name them? And then, because this assignment would be underneath a module, correct? Correct. So for right now, you could just call it, you create a module and call it sample or sandbox because um, you're just playing with it. But in Canvas, you have all of your assignments and your quizzes and your discussions, and they're all just everywhere. I mean, they're all together, but they're not in an organized manner for students. So your modules let you organize your content for students in the way you want them to see them. Um, if you watch my first video, I kind of went, I did a lot of that. I talked about it a lot in detail. So just create any. And if you don't even want to create a module right now, just go to assignments and do plus. You can do it there as well. I, I just created week one. Perfect. As, okay. All right. And then do a so in, in your sample course, your modules are sample lessons, welcome, and then resources and tips, or are those not the modules? Yeah, those are my modules for my okay. course. That's not my right. student course. Right, right. I, I understand that. I'm just trying to see on the layout where, where the modules are. It's like the umbrella, and then underneath you can add whatever you want. Exactly, exactly. Okay. Because like I've created weeks worth of uh, the time tests, right? I've got like 10 time tests, different ones. I don't want the kids to see all that at once. I only want them to see the one that I've assigned that particular week. That's why they see everything through modules. Does that make sense? Yes, thanks for the clarification. All right. All right, so I'm going to start with assignment. I've already added, I put my title here. Uh, you can indent to be neater, um, but that's, again, just kind of layout. 
your new assignment will always pop at the bottom of your list if you have other stuff. Remember that un, if it's green, it's published. If it's not green, it's not. Go ahead and click on the assignment to open it. And now we're going to click on edit. Now, if you haven't been in Canvas since for a while, you'll notice that the menu bar has changed. The Rich Content Editor, they are updating it as we speak. And um, I just learned a new shortcut today. So here's the new shortcut. I'll put that in the chat. This is how you can get um, kind of different menu view. Hang on, where'd the chat go? There we go. This is really cool. If you just do um, option, function, F9, and I'll do it right now, option, function, F9, you get this little edit menu at the top. It's really cool. So this will cut, copy, paste, select all. You've got some insert. Uh, so it's just another way of looking at the menu. Format. And here's your text color in a much you know, better way, backgrounds, tools, and all your table functions. So it's just kind of a new way to look at it. But what we're going to do here is we're going to Im embed the Google Slides. Okay? So I just wrote embed Google Slides just so you know what we're doing. If you come all the way to the right, and I understand they're going to update this again, make it a little clearer, but it's that little plug for plugins. If you click on it, um, you have all these options. If you have Google Apps, that's what you should have. Up will come your Google Drive. And then you can search for whatever file you need. So uncommon. So here's my sample uncommon commonalities template. So I can click on that. Andrea, could you just back up? Where did you just go to get hold that up? Under the there's a little plug at the end of the at the end of the menu bar. You see, it here. You see that at the right there? Um, I have paragraph, and then I have this little person that's objective accessibility. You might have to click the very far right, and it'll bring down another drop-down menu. Yeah, you need to, if you're, that is the first thing that pops, that disappears, so if you expand your window. Does your menu, okay, does your menu bar look like mine? Um... No. It says HTML editor. Oh, okay. So you're, for whatever reason, you're still on the old version. Okay. Okay. For whatever reason, it has not This is, this is only about early a week. So I thought all the districts just did, I thought it automatically predicted that. All right. So if you are on the old one, that says HTML editor. Yes. Uh, sorry, Jasmine. I got Jasmine. I gotta mute you. All right. If you're on the old one, you're looking for a blue V, and up and yeah. a blue V. If you click on that, it'll be almost the same thing. Okay. And then hopefully you'll update quickly. You might want to talk to your district admin. Yep. And what is that called? You have to update what? This is called the Rich Content Editor. Rich Content Editor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and okay. literally it's only been out a week, so I'm not sure why you didn't update. Now, sometimes when I click on adding, it doesn't come, so you have to go back out and go back in. I don't, just don't know why it's sometimes fuzzy. I also have two, and I'm not sure why. But once you click on it, either the V or that little plug, you're going to go to Google, search for what you want. Oops, uncommon. And you're going to find, here's my sample. I just click on it. 
you can either embed it or link to it. Now, if I wanted each student to make their own copy and, well, forget it. No, don't do it. Okay, just click embed, easier. And here it is, right here in the middle. Now, the first time you will have to authorize, but otherwise you're done. Uh, mine says authorization failed. Yeah. I'm not exactly sure why. So you, the first time, you got to go as quick as you can, and you're going to have to put in, oh, that's why. Go to, hang on, let me save this. The very first time, but you won't have to do it until you won't have to do it more than once uh go to go to go to go to go to where do you authorize oh under your account um i believe it's it's either profile or settings now it must be settings so you go into your global menu settings and down web services you need to authorize your google account yeah i already did that <clears throat> i'm not sure why it's it's not working Hmm. Sometimes you just need to do it twice. Okay. Um, and if it says authorize, that authorize button disappears really quickly. So if you just super quick jump in there and click it, <laughs> you can get it. So I don't know why it disappears. I actually put that as a as an issue, a known issue or whatever, so that they know. Yeah, it says registered services Google Drive, but. So you could always just click on it, view it, and maybe you need to add your password again. Yeah. Sorry, I don't know why that. But at least you got it in. You'll just have a space there. Modules. All right, so this is actually, uh-oh, someone wanted to come in. All right, so this actually is not a lesson I would just, this would be something if you have slides that you want the kids just to look through, maybe to read. Any links you put in here would be active. Um, so if you're doing um, hyperdocs, this is a good way to do it, to embed them right here so the kids can just look at it, click on the links. But if you want the kids to each get their own copy, and this is just a sample lesson. So. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, what is the difference between embed and link? So a link will just will take the kids out of Canvas to the document. Okay. Embed puts it in the middle. So you want to keep the kids in Canvas. You okay. Want to keep okay. All right, I'm going to go back to edit now, and I'm going to demonstrate how to a copy to each student. Now, this lesson itself, I did not want to copy to each student, but I'm just using it to show you how to do it. Um, there's little squares down here. There's little... Um, Andrea, I hate to interrupt. It sounds really muffled. It, I yeah, think I just turned it off. So if, yeah, keep your mif microphones muted, please, unless you have a question, or even type them in the chat. I'm just keeping an eye on the chat. Yeah. All right, so go back to your lesson. You're going to edit, and say you have either a slide or a document, and you want the kids to type in it or put the screenshots in it. Instead of embedding it in the directions, you're going to assign each student their own copy. And you do that by coming down below where it says um, submission type. You're going to select external tool. Give everybody a minute to find that. You're then going to click find and you're looking for Google Cloud or Google Drive Cloud Assignment. Select it, and again, you search for the file you want everyone to have their own copy of. So I'm just gonna use the same file just because, oops, what happened? There it is. I select it, mm -hmm. and this time I'm going to hit submit. 
And then you do have to select again. I then slide to the bottom and hit save. And this is, will give every student their own copy of this assignment. Now, you will not be able to see this when you go to student view because you don't have a fake Google account for your student view. So that's kind of a problem. But now, obviously, that's too small. You're like, there's no way kids can work on that that small. But if they click on the blue link here, this makes it bigger for them. They can do their work here. When they're done, instead of them sharing with you and you getting a thousand things in your Google Drive, they come back here and where we have share, students have submit. So every time they make changes, they hit submit and you will know they've made changes and you can then look at it in speed grader. So you can look at every student's work in one page, in one place, I mean, okay? Yes, I'll show it again. So you're editing the assignment. X, slide to the bottom, external tool. You need to find the tool, which is called Google Drive Cloud Assignment. And that's where there's two different Google things. Select it. Oops, did I, I don't think I clicked on it. Find your file, whatever it may be. And this, by the way, it works for um, document, you know, Google Docs, slides, spreadsheets. It even works for Jamboard if, you're, if you've started using Jamboard. Then you hit, now it will give every student their own copy of the Jamboard rather than a collaborative Jamboard, but that might just be fine. Hit submit. You then do need to hit select again. I don't know why, but, and then of course save it. And I will publish this so you can now see it from the student perspective if you wanna go to the, um, the training course. But here's what the students will see. They'll see whatever your directions are on the top and then there's their assignment down below. And like I said, kids will have a submit button here. So I would suggest not to have the view only at the top, the embedded is not needed anymore. What do you mean? Uh, the page on top. Oh no, correct. You don't need that. Yeah, I, you want to remove that. Yeah, no, no, no. This was and this I was just showing you how to do it both different ways depending on your use case. Yeah. So if you want something for just the kids to, to click through and to view, you could do a bunch, you know, if you had videos and things like that. Um, no, you don't have permission to share this document. You need to make a copy of your own. I put the link in the chat. You can make a copy, of, make your own copy, and then that's what you can share. Um, the only problem I will tell you about putting videos in a slide presentation is that unless you've used um, Edpuzzle, you don't know if the kids have watched the videos, right? Or you don't know they've clicked on the links. It'll show how long, you can use analytics to see how long they were on this whole assignment, but you don't know what they did in the assignment. So yeah, absolutely. That's what I would do. I would put directions. If you look through my sample lessons, you'll see some, some better examples. This was just for purposes of demonstration. Um, and this, this actual assignment I'm going to be doing, uh, I think Yasmina asked about linking. I am actually going to have one presentation with 10 of these slides and the kids will all be in the same presentation in groups of four working on them in breakout rooms. So that's a little more complicated. All of the assignments, Jeff, are in the in my training course. Did you get the link to my training course? It's just um, Earl Canvas Bitly 
dot earl or bitly slash earl canvas training and i have a ton of sample assignments and many of them not all but many have directions and teacher notes all right so the second thing i said i was going to talk about today is the new quizzes because there are new quizzes now to get to new quizzes you must go to the quizzes tab on the left hand in the course menu so go ahead everyone and click on quizzes and you will know pretty quick whether your district has activated it. It has been activated in Santa Ana. I believe Temecula has it activated. Yes, I will be posting this recording, although <laughs> I don't know how good it'll be. All right. So when you do the plus quiz, you will know that new the new they have classic quizzes and new quizzes. And you'll know the the new quizzes have been activated because you get this menu. Okay. I strongly suggest you do everything in new quizzes because in December 2020, classic quizzes is going away. Okay. So um, there are a few things better in classic quizzes, but I think they're working on it. So I am going to select it, remember my choice, and hit submit. Okay, are you going to be able to use our quizzes that you created before yes. in all quizzes? Yes. So for now, I would use the quizzes the way they are, the, ones, the old ones you've created in classic quizzes. You can convert them, but there's a couple things that don't convert, so you're going to want to check before you, you know, assign it, don't you? Oh, bummer. I will show you how to do it. I think they're working on a better conversion tool. Um, but anything going forward, I would use the new quizzes. So I'm just gonna call this my sandbox. Andrea, before you go on, um, this is Carla again. If you, if my um, rich content editor or whatever is not updated, oh, is mine gonna look different then? I don't, did you have that option on quizzes? For I me? No, I did not. Oh, yeah, you don't have it yet. So you. Okay. You need, to call, you need to call your admin, your district admin, and make okay. sure it's updated. Okay. Um, so I guess you'll just watch this part, sorry. No, that's fine. All right. So you will notice that it already has an external tool because the new quizzes uses an external tool, but we really don't care. It's it's done for us. So put your title of your quiz. We're gonna hit save. I know that's weird. Why would you hit save with just a title? But And now we're in the quiz. So my quiz is called Sandbox Quiz. And you have a lot more options on question types. So I'm going to put another link. No, that's not it. Oh, yes, it is. Okay, I'm going to copy another link into the chat. And this link is for a slides presentation, but it has... Oh, that's not going to work. All right, let's just do this then. All right. Um, yeah, I will. I will give everybody that link. Paste. Okay. So this is to a slides presentation. This is an elementary school lesson. Um, go ahead and open that. Make your own copy, please. And then I want to give everybody one more link. Give me a second. Three. Three. Share the link. Okay, I'm going to put a second link. The second link is an audio file, so just go ahead and add it to your Google Drive. It does need to be in your Google Drive. So basically anything in your Google Drive you can add. So I'm gonna start, the word instructions here just stays there, there's nothing you can do about it. You can change the title by clicking on the little pencil. When you click away, it's done. Instructions, click on the title. I'm gonna say, um, listen to the story. Steal. as to your and answer the questions. 
Okay, listen to the story, answer the questions. I'm now going to add that audio file, okay? But you could do anything. I mean, you, you could say answer the questions. So I'm going to upload media. Audio. Andrea, I think the second one that you put on the chat is the same as the first one. Oh, is it? Think, yeah, it is. It no. looks it looks exactly the same. Oh, the second one should just. Oh, maybe I didn't. Okay, hang on. It shareable link. Oh. To cry. Thanks. All right, paste. Okay, there you go. Try that. One. Is that one different? Yeah, that one's different. Okay, thank you. Sorry about that. No worries. No. With the new Google sharing, I sometimes forget to hit copy. All right. Let's go back. So it's an audio file. And, and I share this only because um, it's a great elementary lesson. Okay. Where the kids have to listen to a story and respond. Now, remember, this does not. Oh, shoot. Fix the permissions. I'm sure that I said. A shareable link. Restricted only people, uh, anyone with the link. All right, everybody, try that again. Sorry. Third time's the charm. Um, this is a great elementary lesson where the kids listen to a story and then answer questions. And just because we're using the quiz feature or the quiz tool doesn't mean it's a test. And I really had to explain explain that to my students because they would see quiz and they would freak out. I'm like, no, it's just an assignment using the quiz tool. But what it allows me to do is ask a series of different types of questions based on a prompt. And I'll show you some examples of ones that I built in a few minutes. But all right, so we're going to go ahead. Done. I've got my directions. Oh, I didn't add my insert media. The source, the embed, the, oh no. Okay. Now where to go? Insert media. It's being weird. Upload media. So I do have this on my desktop. So I'm just going to grab it from my desktop. You can, um, Either grabs, oh, maybe on the quiz. The quizzes and the assignment functions are a little bit different, although I know they're fixing them. But here's the file. Let's see if that works. Import. If I hit done, there we go. All right, done. There's my, there's my, uh, my story. And it's the three little kittens, so we all know it. Using the plus button, you can add different assignment types. So maybe the first of, the first question is going to be an essay question. Self-explanatory. I'm going to click on essay. Now, where it says question title, that's like your category. So I'm just going to call it three LK, three little kittens. So later, if I'm looking at these questions, I know that these are my three little kitten questions. But it's not important the kids do not see that question title. But they do see it here where you enter the question prompt. So I'm going to say, have you ever lost anything important? And what did you do? What did you do? OK. And I want the kids to use the rich content editor to answer the question. So it's an, it's an essay question. And then you do need to hit done. Oh, you can add points. So I'm going to make this worth three points. I usually do, you know, three points for, for you know, a good detailed answer. And then done. And that's your essay question. The next type of question we're going to talk about is um, a file upload. This is great, especially for math, if you want the kids working on paper. Uh, and this is my 
three LK again. Remember the kids don't see that. The stem, what that really means, that's really your prompt. Okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I don't know why. I thought it would be in the free version, but maybe not. The new quizzes. Um, so you can just follow along. Sorry. Um, I'm waiting for file upload. I'm draw a picture of the kittens. Right. And then I do want to restrict file. And I'm not going to restrict file types, but I could. Maybe I only want, you know, JPEGs or PNGs or something. Okay. And the kids here, when I hit done, they're going to use either their phone or their camera on their computer, whatever, to take a picture of their work. And they literally drag mm. it in. They just drag it in there. So for math, this is going to be great. But also for elementary, when you want the kids drawing stuff, um, because you're not going to give them worksheets that they print, right? But they could still draw, you know, freehand. All right, Hotspot, I want to show you how. Oh, that's so cool. So check out Hotspot. This is one of my favorites. So I couldn't think of a Hotspot question. So I'm going to do um, a number line question instead. A Hotspot question for three little kittens. Can so, you elaborate what a Hotspot is first? I'm show like, you. What are, oh, okay. So I'm going to show you. So I'm going to say locate negative three on the number line, right? <laughs> and this could be locate Paris on the map. It could be, it's a locating. Person. But notice I have the full content editor here and I also can drag and drop files. So this is where I'm gonna drag and drop the file I want them to locate something on. So let me find my number line. Uh oh, where did I put my number? I don't know where the Yay. number line went. Andrea, can you stop for a second? <laughs> I feel back on step one <laughs> on the essay. I finally figured out what to do. You had to do the plus thing. Yes. Have you ever lost anything? I could, but you can't like that name thing. You can't copy and paste what you write in there because I, I put it in there. And that, and then I tried to put, paste it. Oh, there it is. Okay, did it this time, of course. Okay, now you can copy and paste. It's right. a okay. Bit so then, okay, now, okay, on that, on the first one, you just put it in there, and you did three little. Uh, you just put little, little kittens or something. Okay, draw, draw a picture of the kittens or something. Yeah. No, no, I'm talking essay. Essay one was you just type the the where it says essay. It's a, that's just a title, correct? Yes, yes. And, and the kids don't see it. Then you put in the question. What did you do? Okay. Right. Then, then, okay. I lost it. Oh no, here I, it is. Okay. I can't find my number line, so I'm just gonna put something Done. else. I'm not wasting everybody's time. Done. Uh, oh. And there's to do that. Okay, then. Okay, God. I keep hitting buttons. I know. And that. Then you are file upload. So what? Yeah. Go ahead and mute yourself and work through it, and then we can we can work on it. All right. So I'm just gonna pick any any file to stick in here. So I, I try to put PDF and it doesn't work. What type of file does it have to be? Uh. Oh, it needs to be a picture, a JPEG. Oh, picture. So I'm going to change my direction. I'm going to say locate a letter G. I don't know. In the picture. Because <laughs> I don't really know where I put. So here's how Hotspot works. So I drag in the picture. It could be a map, a number line. It could be words. Um, if you're doing grammar, it could be um, the mistake, and then you indicate where you want. Okay, whoever's not muted, please mute. Please mute. All right, um, you then highlight where you want the kids to touch. 
So if I want them to touch the G square, and I'm going to highlight it right there. And now that's the correct answer. That is now the correct answer. So the kids know, they will know when they see it, I'll hit done. They will literally touch here. And that'll show them the correct answer. Does that make sense? So it could, they could locate anything. Any picture you drag in, you have all those options. I'll show you the options again. Uh, if you're using a map, you could use this polygon. You could use a circle or a square. And that's where you want the kids to touch. Now, I make it a little bigger than I think, you know, because they're kitty fingers or kitty mouse. But then they can, they can touch any, they can touch there. All right, let's go a few more question types. Fill in the blank is huge. Andrea, the hotspot is only one, huh? Yes, unfortunately. I yeah. was thinking of multiple points or a line or something. So it's just a dot. Just, just one place. Yeah. So if you're doing multiples, you've got to do multiple <laughs> pictures, unfortunately. Okay. Um, hopefully they'll change that. But all right. So let's do uh, fill in the blank because this was a little tricky. So um, I wanted to do a table. Oh, and this is weird. I've already. When you want to make that bigger, you grab the corner, but you have to. You have to grab it a couple times. <laughs> Hang on, make it bigger and then click in it so it stays open. It's kind of weird. So what I wanted to do here is I wanted a table and I wanted the kids to fill in the table, um, but there was no easy way to do it. So here's what I came up with. I added my image of my table. I created this in, um, in uh, Google Drawing. And I put a letter where each missing number was. So I don't know if you can see that clearly. I'll make, try and make this bigger. So I put a, a letter where each missing variable, and I'm using this for proportional reasoning. So down below, <laughs> it says type a statement. So what I did is I said a equals, and for this one, a equals two, B equaled four, C equaled six. And I just put some spaces. D equaled E equaled ten. Whoops, equal ten. And F equaled nine times two, eighteen. All right. So those are the answers. Here's how you make it fill in the blank. You highlight what you want to be open and you hit create blank and i can do it again highlight the four because i want that missing create blank and you do that for all of the blanks now be aware if the kids put 8.0 it might come up as wrong so you could put other options if you think that they might write something else but this is how you can do fill in multiple uh, blanks, sure. and then here yeah. are all the answers. Open entry, and that's what they get. I, I'm just gonna leave. <laughs> and the kids will see A equals blank, B equals blank, C equals blank, and they need to fill in um, the missing numbers. So that's how you can do a fill in multiple blanks. Now, there is an option to do a word bank. You could, if you're doing an elementary school, you might want to give them a word bank. That way all the words are um, uh, spelled out correctly for them, okay? There's also this categorization, okay? So you could have two categories. You could have, uh, okay, so my directions are here at the top. Uh, at, uh, Which question type was this? Category, categorize, categorization. Okay. And which one did you say you use if you had a worksheet you wanted to upload and they could fill, fill, um, that would be like file, file upload. File upload. File upload. Okay. Thanks. Categorize these items of clothing. I'm actually going to use this for, you know, like integers and non integers. 
But my first category is going to be winter clothes. And I guess this one will be summer clothes. Oops, clothes. And then you type, you type in all the correct answers. So I'm going to say for winter, I'm going to say scarf. Add an answer, mittens, um, boots, I don't know. Okay, summer, I'm going to do swimsuit, flip, flops, oops, flip, flops, I don't know. All right, so now I can also add a distractor. Now, for summer and winter clothing, probably don't want a distractor, but you could. And I could say, you know, kit, uh, kitten. I don't know. When you hit done, you will see the, the correct answers. Okay. So we're kind of over our hour here. So what I want to do is go up to the top and show you preview and show you what this all looks like. Andrea, do you hit done before you hit preview or do you hit... You can preview. You always, have, you always have to hit done after every single question. So here's the kids. Here is the quiz. So here's the story they can listen to. Once three little kittens. Okay, get the idea. They can type. They can drag, drag and it says drag and drop their file. Locate the G. They would literally click on it, right? Here's the table. A equals, and they type in their answers. Categorize, they literally drag them to the right place. And then, of course, they hit submit. When you, For the categorizing, it's only two, two no. columns? There are more columns. You can create more categories if you want. Okay. I just did two. Um, I don't know what that little pin is. I think that's for them to go back and look at later. I haven't really tried the pin. Let's see what that looks like. I'll hit submit. Oh, and these questions have not been answered. So you can cancel and go back and work on it. So it does give them a warning if they miss something. But, oh, I went, I didn't mean to go all the way back. There are a bunch of options. If you look under your settings, this is where the settings now are. You can shuffle questions, shuffle answers one at a time. Uh, you can require a student code if you don't want them to access it until you tell them. Time limit. Uh, if you want a calculator, multiple attempts, okay? And then what do you want the kids to see? Do you want them to see all the correct answers? Do you want to see points? There's all the options. And then the reports, you can do a question and item and analysis um, to see which were like the most questions and whatever. You can moderate. So if you want to um, give students an extra chance, you can look at it and click on it to moderate. So that is the short of it. Um, we've gone over our hours. So, oh, you can make copies. Let's get last thing I wanted to show. Uh, two more things super quick. Let me go to return. So if you've qu created a quiz, so like for my math reps, I want to do the same exact quiz assignment. I'm just changing the numbers. If you click on the three dots, you can now duplicate your quiz. You can also send it to somebody. So if you want to just send it to a friend, send it to a friend. Or you can copy it to another course, one of your own courses. Okay, so there's those options as well. Andrea, remember with the classic quizzes, when you duplicate, there was a lot of issues. This yeah. is actually this is our brand new, and then you just edit it there. Yes. Yeah. Awesome. Classic quizzes, you couldn't duplicate yeah, nice because it, it didn't work. But now it does beautifully. So I think okay, my thank you. Um, and you can also tell um, new quizzes, the little rocket is filled in. Old quizzes, it's empty. Classic quizzes, it's it's uh, just an outline. So, all right, other questions. So Carla, the time tests I do, um, I based it on the Edge of Protocol called the Fast and Curious. And basically, the kids are competing against themselves. And I do your basic addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. But I also do um, multiplying integers, adding integers. And there's a, after you've done all your conceptual development, at some point, there's, there needs to be fluency. 
And the idea is they do the same quiz every single day for a week. And the first day after they do it, then with the class, you would talk about common mistakes. Um, but then they do it every single day. And then by Friday, they should be pretty fluent. Um, but the kids can go back and do it as many times as they want. I'm not going to tell them, oh, you can't go backwards and do it again. Um, so the kids will compete with themselves. It's automatically graded. No more of those math minutes. Um, it's graded just a teeny grade because my older son never passed his time tests ever, ever. But he got fives on both AP calculus exams. So obviously he understood math. But it's just a matter of developing fluency. Uh, but look up edu protocols, fast and the curious. Uh, a lot of teachers use it for vocabulary. Instead of teaching uh, vocabulary, they'll do that instead. Okay. Edu protocols. And if you don't want to create your own, you can always use the ones in quizzes. Q U I Z Z. No, Q U I Z Z. Whatever the the website. There's tons that are made. You can copy. Um, it's, yeah. It's the same thing for vocabulary. You'll give them the 10 words, multiple choice. Give it to my mind. You then do a quick review of anything that's commonly missed using that um, using the, um, the item analysis tool inside Canvas. You then give them the same one on Tuesday, Wednesday. Gary, I'm waiting on a bid for a dresser in... Um, Somebody, Marcos. Okay, hang on. All right. So, <laughs> Edge of Protocol is fast and curious. All right. Um, yes. Yeah, so, grades automatically go to the Canvas grade book. <laughs> it's and if your district has pass back, which means the grades go from Canvas to your regular grade book, you can do that. It'll do it automatically. Um, if it doesn't, you can. Um, all I do is I wait till the grading period and I just copy them in. But, um, okay, my sample course, here's the, it's bit.ly slash girl canvas train, T-R-A-I-N-I-N-G. There's my link to my training course. I don't know why it's capitalized. It doesn't need to be, sorry. So other questions? All right, I'm going to go ahead and stop the recording, um, but I can hang out a few more minutes to answer questions.